Hey, what's up internet? Jay is Two Cents here bringing you a video today all about audio and capturing some audio and some really cheap alternatives you guys can use to really step up the quality of the audio on your channels. Believe it or not, I get asked this quite often and I'm no audio expert, but just like you, I did have a lot of money to spend and I really wanted to increase the audio quality of my weekly podcast, Tech Talk with Jay's Two Cents and Barnacles. So I'm gonna show you guys what I picked up, how it sounds and how much it costs. We really talk about cost, but damn, but this one, it's worth talking about. All right, so first things first, if you've noticed the audio quality right now is pretty much poop. I mean, it is just one big cow pie, if you know what I'm saying. A lot of times people when they start out their channels are so interested in video quality or trying to get the best video quality they can, they don't stop to think about the audio quality. And a lot of times people will listen to a video more than they will actually watch it. So if your audio quality is garbage, people are not going to stick around and watch your video. Okay, so first things first guys, take the built-in microphone in your cameras and just throw them out the window. Say, whatever, pff, you're garbage, I don't need you. It doesn't matter if it's a DSLR, Canon 5D Mark III, whatever. The best DSLRs have the crappiest microphones built in because people know that you're not gonna be using onboard camera mics for most, if not all, situations. So what am I talking on then? And how do I recommend getting good sound quality? Well, what I had been using in the past is my Sennheiser E835 mic just off camera through XLR into a Zoom H4 end audio recorder into my DSLR. But the problem with that for a lot of people is that's actually not a very cheap setup. The H4N is still uh, well over $200. The microphone itself is 100 bucks. The cable's 20 something bucks. And so you're talking about well over $350 with tax and stuff to get decent audio into your camera. And most people starting out channels, that's just not in the books. It's not possible. It's way too expensive. So what do I recommend? Well, obviously I'm not talking on this right now. As you can see, it's not plugged in. Not to mention the handling of it would be massively noisy. So I'm actually talking on my birthday present that my wife bought me. I've used this in a couple of videos and that is the Rode uh, SmartLav. Now, some people may pronounce this red. I guess that's an accent O. It actually changes that from road to red. I don't know, okay? Rode pronounces it Rode on their own website and their own videos. So I'm saying Rode. Don't correct me. If you do, I don't know, I'll write you an angry comment. Okay, so this is the Smart Lab, and here it is right here. And as you can see, it's just clipped to my shirt. It comes with uh, its own clip. It's got a lot, nice long cable. So how am I capturing the audio? Well, it's called the Smart Lab because it's designed to work with your iOS device. Now, I say iOS because that's what their app is designed for. I think they're working on an Android app. It may already be out, I'm not sure. But if we take a look at the phone right here, you can see I'm actually capturing all of the audio right now on my smartphone, completely independent of the camera. So when I'm doing my editing of video, this is clearly gonna be synced up and put into the video. And you sync it by clapping, and then you line up those peaks on the uh, editing software, and so that everything lines up, and then you just mute the track you don't want. There you go, you've got the audio from this thing. Well, how much is this? Well, this lab setup is actually $60 on Amazon. Yeah, link is down in the description. I think for $60, it's gonna be very hard to find a better solution than this. And of course, you know, it's not a fantastic lavalier, but for what it is, it's really hard to argue with it. Now I wanted to increase the audio for Tech Talk. I've been doing Tech Talk now for uh, about a year and a half, and I really wanted to start to give you guys better audio quality. And I had been using a, a Blue Yeti, which is a USB mic, which is another great mic. In fact, I even recommended it in my previous microphone video, but now we are stepping things up a lot further. Now I love my E835 from Sennheiser so much, I don't think there's another mic you can get on for a hundred bucks that sounds as good. Even the Shure SM58, I'm not convinced is as good as this mic. I've listened to both. Uh, in fact, I bought the SM58 first and returned it for this mic, so I've listened to both. This is my opinion right here. For a hundred bucks, this is the best mic you can get. The problem with it is that guy right there. That is an XLR input. And the problem with the XLR is it's just an analog signal and it needs some way to get into your computer. Now the Zoom H4n, you could use that as an interface. Uh, problem is for me, I got a bunch of crackling sounds when I used it as an interface, so it wasn't uh, feasible. 
In fact, I've been trying to make this transition to using this mic for Tech Talk for quite a while. So I thought, well, you know, I know that there are USB mixers and EQs that I can buy uh, that I can use to get to the computer, in the sound into the computer, but those are just way too expensive. I, I just was like, I'm not gonna drop hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to do Tech Talk, and, and that's a, a horrible waste of money. So I started looking over the internet and started looking reviews, and I found this guy. And this is the Elisis Multi-Mix 4 uh, USB EQ mixer. It's actually a four channel mixer. It integrates through USB into your computer. It has its own power source. It even has phantom power. Uh, even though I don't need it, this is a dynamic mic. It doesn't need power. Uh, it can power your mics that require power like the AT2020 and, and whatnot. If they need phantom, I don't recall if they do, but whatever, if you need a, a, something to power your mic, this can do that. And the thing is, this thing is not expensive. In fact, I'll tell you the price at the end. So I want you to hear it first. Now when it comes to settings, you have two, uh, you have a two band EQ on here. You have the highs, which are 10,000 Hertz, and you have your lows, which are 80 Hertz. I would have liked to have seen maybe a mid, a mid range, like a 2.5 K Hertz uh, filter on there or EQ, but you know, whatever. For the, for the price point this is, I have no complaints. But it's got a low pass uh, filter on there. It's got a, its own gain controls, four channels, stereo. It's got DB meter right here, so you can see if you're clipping or whatnot. It's nice and weighted, and it's got great reviews on it. In fact, it's, you know, it's got power. You can turn it on and off when you're not using it. So yeah, the feature set on this is actually pretty good considering the price point. Now enough talking about it. Let's go ahead and turn around. Let's hook it up to the computer. Let's set up the webcam, and let's kind of look at this as if I was doing my channel uh, with a webcam like a lot of people are going to be, and let's see how this thing sounds. And you might agree with me that it's definitely worth taking a look at. Now I may, ha I may have mentioned, I may not have mentioned that this uh, is a Heil PL2T boom, desk boom. I do not recommend it. If there has ever been a product that Jay has said, do not buy it, don't buy it. Ignore my example and learn from my mistake. Don't buy this desk boom. Way overpriced. There are so many better options on Amazon and eBay. I'll even link a few down in the description. Uh, to get a cheap way of mounting your mic to your desk, ignore this one behind me. Just pretend it doesn't exist, please, for the love of God. Worst purchase I ever made. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the computer. Now we're back and I think immediately the first thing you'll have to notice is the audio quality of what you're currently listening to. Now I wanna point this out. I am doing absolutely no post-production whatsoever to the audio quality. I'm not adding any EQ. I'm not doing any sort of smoothing on any of Audacity or anything like that. I am capturing the audio straight into Audacity exactly as the EQ is spitting it to the computer. Now, here's the kicker. This amplifier, or this, not amplifier, but this EQ and mixer was $61. That's right, six one, sixty one dollars, and I think for the audio quality that you're getting, is uh, for that price, I just I had to, I, I had to do it, and I think you guys would agree that the audio quality is fantastic. So if you're looking at doing podcasts or doing game commentaries or anything like that, I definitely would recommend getting an XLR setup like this over some sort of a direct USB mic. Now that's my opinion because it's the EQ. I mean, as you can see here, I can pull the bass out. So now we don't have nearly as much bass in there, or I can add some more highs to, I'm sure everything sounds different right now. Um, go ahead and put it back how it was because I like that nice, warm radio announcer voice. And the cool thing is that I can control all the audio on this. Now, if I want to input music or something from a, straight from my phone or something like that, I could do that through one of the other channels. That's the cool thing about a mixer is you're, you've got so many options. Now, the only drawback to this mixer I've noticed is that the noise floor is very, very high. Now the noise floor is that hiss or that, just that kind of a background noise, if you will, I guess, the, the actual current noise that the microphone and the line and all that picks up. And it's actually really, really high. In fact, I've currently got the Windows levels for the USB device for this amplifier. Why do I keep calling it amplifier? For this EQ uh, set at seven of 100. And this is what you're hearing. Yeah, seven of 100 is where I had to put the audio levels because if I went any higher, uh, then it was clipping unbelievably bad. In fact, right now, I'm getting I'm getting all the way up to zero dB. And I, I think I might be clipping just a little bit. So I just pulled it back quite a little bit. And that's the cool thing. I just reached down and I turned the knob. So I can be like, ah, uh, uh, 
Uh, so I definitely recommend if you guys want to bring your audio or your, your channels up to the next level, if you're doing game commentaries or a podcast or something like that, save yourself a couple hundred bucks and do something like this. I mean, this whole setup, the EQ, mixer, mic, and the cable, and even an inexpensive boom, you guys could have that for less than $200. And that's the thing. An AT 2020 USB mic, you're talking 130 bucks already. And or the USB, the Yeti, USB Yeti mic was 150 when I bought it. So we're not talking that much more money and a hell of a lot better audio quality. So guys, Jay's Two Cents, hope this video has helped you in some way. Uh, hope it's gonna help me in some way, quite honestly. We're gonna find out how well it does on Tech Talk. But uh, if you want to ask me questions about this setup, I'll do the best I can to answer them. You can do it on uh, Twitter, Facebook, all the social media stuff. And uh, as always, guys, listen to this mic. See how it does this Thursday on Tech Talk. There'll be a live event link right in the uh, front page of the video on Thursday or the channel on Thursday uh, afternoon, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Do the math. You can figure out when it's on for you. There will be a replay and archive as well. And uh, tell me what you guys think of this mic setup. As always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. And, uh, well, stay classy.